Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session. My name is Maroon. I'm the VP of Operations at Farhat Accounting Lectures, and I'm more than happy to guide you through this diluted earnings per share CPA exam simulation. Before we dive into the facts of the simulation and explain how to compute the diluted earnings per share, first, we're going to explain the what and the why behind this topic. I encourage you to always invest some time in gaining a deeper understanding of the topic at hand before going ahead and memorizing the formula or applying it. Because memorizing information that doesn't make sense or seems illogical could be frustrating and ineffective at most times. So the first question is, what is the diluted EPS? It is a financial metric that measures a company's potential and not actual reduced profit per share due to the potential and not the actual increase in the number of outstanding shares from convertible securities, options, or warrants. So in the absence of these three convertible securities or stock options or stock warrants, the diluted EPS is equal to basic EPS. However, the presence of any of these three is not going to automatically dilute the EPS. We have to compute the effect of any convertible securities on the basic EPS and see, is it going to reduce the profit per share or no? And why is that? Because we're only going to show the worst case scenario. We are required to apply the rule of conservatism and show only potential bad news to the shareholders or to the investors. So for convertible securities, we're going to use the what if method. So if the basic EPS is $50, what if the convertible securities were converted? What would happen to the basic EPS? If it, it would go up to $60, then I would disregard this convertible security and not include it in the computation of the diluted EPS. However, if the conversion of these uh, securities lead or may lead to a decrease in the basic EPS, then I'm going to include this convertible security in the computation of the diluted EPS. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Elijah Sales Corporation has reported net income of $1 million for the year. The company has 200,000 shares of common stock outstanding. Now, the good news in this exercise is that we don't need to compute the weighted average of common stock outstanding because it is already provided as 200,000. Additionally, the corporation has the following convertible securities. 10,000 convertible bonds, each convertible into 20 shares of common stock. So when we're computing the diluted EPS using the what if converted method, we're going to multiply these 10,000 convertible bonds by the 20 shares to calculate the additional shares that may be issued as a, result, as a result of the conversion, the potential conversion. And we're going to take into account the interest expense on these bonds, which was 100,000 and the tax rate is 30%. We're going to take the interest savings from converting the bonds into common stock because the interest expense would no longer be incurred on the converted bonds because they don't exist. If they have been converted, they don't exist anymore. So we would compute the savings 
the adjustment to net income as 100,000 multiplied by one minus the tax rate. So one minus 30% is 70%. We would have an adjustment to net income of 70,000. So we're gonna take both of these amounts into account when considering whether the convertible bonds are dilutive or anti-dilutive. Also for the, for the other securities, which are 4,000 shares of convertible preferred stock, each convertible into 10 shares of common stock, we're gonna do the same. We're gonna compute the potential additional shares from the conversion of all the convertible preferred stock. So 4,000 multiplied by 10 is 40,000 additional shares of common stock. And the preferred dividends for the year of 200,000 may be saved in case these convertible preferred stock were converted into common stock. Now the preferred dividends, they are not taxable. So we're gonna take the amount as it is. The tax doesn't affect equity. Preferred dividends are part of equity. They are not taxable. Unlike the interest expense, which is uh, taxable and the real savings need to be taken into account net of tax because remember net income is net of tax. We are required to compute the basic earnings per share and the diluted earnings per share. Now, even if we were not requested to compute the basic earnings per share, we still have to compute it in order to be able to determine whether each of these two convertible securities are dilutive or anti-dilutive. So always step one in computation of the diluted earnings per share is to compute the basic earnings per share. How do we compute basic EPS? It's the net income available to common shareholders, which is the difference between net income and preferred dividends declared during the period, divided by the weighted average number of common shares outstanding or WAXO. For our numerator, the difference between net income and preferred dividends is 1 million minus 200,000, it's $800,000. For our WAXO, it's already provided as 200,000 shares. So the basic EPS is $800,000 divided by 200,000 shares. It's $4 per share. Now for the computation of the diluted EPS, first we need to, to consider each convertible security separately and determine whether it is dilutive or anti-dilutive. How we're going to do that, we're going to start with the convertible bonds and calculate the impact on the numerator, specifically net income, because the convertible bonds will affect net income by the interest expense incurred by the company. When they are converted to common stock, the interest expense would be saved by the company. And we will need to consider the effect net of tax because we are computing the effect on net income, which is net of tax. So it is interest expense multiplied by one minus the tax rate. The interest expense is 100,000. One minus 0 0.3 is the one minus the tax rate of 30%. And the interest expense saved is $70,000. Now what's the effect on the numerator, on the denominator, which is the WAXO? We have an additional shares of 10,000 multiplied by 20, so 10,000 are the number of convertible bonds, and each bond is convertible to 20 shares. So 10,000 multiplied by 20, we have 20, 200,000 of additional shares. So how we're gonna determine if it is dilutive or anti-dilutive, we're gonna compute the ratio of the impact, which is $70,000. This is the addition to net income. And this is the addition to the denominator or the WAXO. So we're gonna divide the $70,000 by the 200,000 shares and the impact would be 
So finally, we're going to compare this amount with the basic EPS. If it is less than the basic EPS, the convertible bonds would be considered dilutive. And this is the case here because $0.35 is less than $4. And the convertible bonds are dilutive and must be considered in the computation of the diluted EPS. Now, you can also compute the basic EPS uh, by adding the $70,000 to the numerator and 200,000 uh, shares to the denominator and see if the basic EPS will go down. But it's more work. So here it's easier to just deal with the impact. It's just less work to do. But the result is the same. Now we're going to deal with the convertible preferred stock and we're going to apply the same method by calculating the impact on the numerator and the impact on the denominator of the potential conversion of preferred stock. And in our numerator, the preferred dividends would be eliminated. Why? Because remember the numerator of the basic EPS is net income minus preferred dividends. So if all the preferred stock was converted to common stock, this wouldn't exist anymore. And the whole income would be available to common shareholders, including the new shareholders that have converted from preferred stock to common stock. So the preferred dividends are no longer paid. The, thus, income available to common shareholders increases by 200,000. That's the effect on the numerator, an increase of 200,000. And the effect on the denominator is an increase of 4,000 shares times 10 shares per preferred stock because each share is entitled to 10 shares of common stock. So 4,000 multiplied by 10 is 40,000 shares. This is the addition to the WAXO. So the ratio of the impact is $200,000 divided by 40,000 shares. It's $5 per share. Now the question is, is this $5 more or less than the basic EPS? Now remember the basic EPS is $4. Therefore, the $5 is more and the ratio of the impact is going to bring the WAXO or to bring the EPS up. And this is good news. And we don't want to show any good news. We are not allowed to do that. According to the rule of conservatism, we're only going to show the dilutive effect of securities and not the anti-dilutive. So we're going to disregard the effect of uh, the potential conversion of preferred stock. Because actually, the common shareholders would be hoping for the preferred shareholders to convert from preferred stock to common stock because this would have a positive effect on their uh, earnings per share. So the company will not show the potential effect of this anti-dilutive security. So how are we going to compute the diluted EPS since only the bonds or convertible bonds are going to be taken into consideration in the computation of diluted EPS? There would be no change to the preferred dividends. They are still going to be deducted from net income because we're not considering that they're going to be converted to common stock. And we're only going to add the interest expense saved net of tax. And in the denominator, we're only going to add the shares from the conversion of bonds. So the diluted EPS is the net income of 1 million minus the preferred dividends of 200,000 plus the interest expense saved net of tax of 70,000 divided by the WAXO. WAXO is 200,000 plus the additional shares from bonds, 200,000. So the diluted EPS is 870,000 divided by 400,000. It's $2.175, which is lower than the basic EPS of $4.
What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look for additional resources to help you with your CPA exam preparation and accounting exam preparation. Thank you for watching and happy studying.